Hi, this is Garden Art Lesson Plan number six, Watercolor and Oil Pastel Green Resist. So this week in the garden lesson, we talked about photosynthesis, and which is the way plants make food, and the chemical in the plants that um, is the agent of photosynthesis is chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is green. So what you need in terms of materials for this project are some real leaves collected from the garden, some tube watercolors, or you can use the cake watercolors, but I prefer the tubes because uh, it's easier to mix them. But you need some oil pastels. I've peeled down the green ones because we're gonna be using them on their side and some complementary colors to the green, which is uh, red, reds and oranges. You need a palette, of course, a brush, a rag, a cup of water, and uh, uh, an expensive sketch pad from your art supply store. So right you're here, there's some examples of uh, what we've done. I'm going to demonstrate three different techniques. There's a rubbing technique, a negative space technique, and a printing technique. And all three are included in the composition, although you don't have to do all three. So the first thing we're going to do is choose a leaf. Now in terms of green, um, if you look on the color wheel, red is opposite green, so that gives a nice contrast in this composition. And in order to mix green, we talked earlier about three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And when you mix primary colors, you get the secondary colors of green, orange, and purple. So on my palette, I put some blue and some yellow and also some green and white. Okay, the first technique I'm gonna demonstrate is the leaf rubbing technique. And it's, you choose a leaf from your pile, try to find one that has lots of texture on it uh, with a lot of veins. And you put the textured side up and slip it under your paper and take your complementary color and lightly rub over the leaf. And you'll see the vein texture starts coming out. It won't be a perfect impression that's where we use the watercolors to, as I say, jazz it up. So here's where we get to mix some colors. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and we get green. I'm gonna add white, so there's some uh, contrast with the dark pastels and a lighter lighter leaf. Bring our leaf out there and uh, just make some leaf shapes following the veins that you've traced. Sometimes you have to experiment with the leaves to get the ones that really pop out in terms of texture. So before you make your final composition, you can experiment a little bit just with different shaped leaves and different uh, textured leaves and just experiment with the rubbing part of it. Okay, the second technique we're going to show is negative space. So negative space is the space around an object. So if I were drawing this leaf in terms of negative space, I would go around it and it has holes in it, so that's also negative space. So you can trace around it. You can rub around it a little bit. It's sort of like you're going to make the leaf's aura. I'm going to put those holes in there. There's your negative space leaf. Then you can jazz it up by putting the veins in as you observe them. So these have offset veins. There's one down there and then one coming up there. Maybe accentuate that edge a bit. And then I'm gonna mix another green.
I'll just fill that in. You can also put more of an aura around your leaf. Just the idea is to get the kids to look at leaves and think about color. It's kind of a more abstract composition than realistic, but I think it's interesting. Okay, the third technique I'm going to demonstrate is leaf printing. So again, it's a good idea to get a leaf with a fair bit of texture on it. Uh, I'm gonna try this one. It's a fairly complicated leaf. <clears throat> and again, mix up some green, doesn't matter what green. And you don't want this to be real thick because it'll come out blobby, so fairly thin. Paint the back of your leaf. And then you're just going to take your leaf and press it onto the paper and make an impression. Ooh, that looks good. And you can do it a few times with the paint that you apply. And again, use your pastels to jazz it up. Oh. So this one had a little stem going that way and you can jazz up the leaf shapes. distinct so you can jazz it up even more. And you can add more watercolor if you want to take it a few steps farther. Uh, that was our three-lobed leaf, so I'm going to put some more texture on it. The idea is to just play with it and enjoy the shape of leaves. The, the, you can talk about the um, patterns of leaves, if it's a simple leaf or a compound leaf, does it have branching patterns, the patterns of the veins in the leaf. These leaves give us lots of interesting visual information. See how the pastels resist some of the watercolor and make for a really interesting effect. And there's your leaf watercolor oil pastel resist. See you next time.